Hello, I'm Dewey Saskew and I will be reviewing Priceline.com's Terms of Use Agreement. Priceline.com is an American-based website whose services to provide the best travel rate packages for vacationers which will include hotel, flights, cruises, and rental cars. In this presentation, I will briefly review sections A through F of the Priceline.com Terms and Conditions which are designed to protect Priceline in the interest of dispute resolution via arbitration, warranties, liability limitations, chargebacks, trademarks, and copyright infringement. I also plan to answer three important questions within this review. And that's, one, is it a valid contract? Two, are visitors bound to it? Or should they have to click I agree? Three, if you have a dispute with Priceline, can you sue them? Why or why not? Four, what changes would you recommend? Throughout Priceline's term of use, they make it clear that the site is only responsible for providing the transmission of information between customer and third party entities. Priceline begins its policy by stating that each and every user of the site should carefully read the terms of use because any action taken within the site is in compliance with rules and guidelines provided and also assumes that each customer took the time to read the policy. As you can imagine, or are probably thinking right now, this practice is stating that customers should be knowledgeable of all of the provided information in the terms of use or privacy policy, which is not presented to them forthright upon entering is unfair to the consumer. Okay, so although Section A, which is the section about disputes and arbitration, makes up the majority of this review, we are going to touch on that section last. First will be Section B, the disclaimer of warranties where Priceline simply states that there are no warranties for the information that they provide on their site. They keep this section short and sum it up stating, without limiting the foregoing no warranty or guarantee is made. 1. Regarding the acceptance of any request. 2. That a user will receive the lowest available price for goods and or services available through this site. 3 regarding the availability of products and or services through this site or where applicable at any participating retailer or retailer location or four regarding the result that may be obtained from the use of this site although this information is slightly eye-opening as to how Priceline releases itself from needing to guarantee any customers warranties for business done on their site, it is also not surprising and understandable as rates can change on the fly. The next section is a liability clause. According to Lawrence Maxwell of Baker Donaldson, a limitation of liability clause is a provision in a contract that limits the amount of exposure a company faces in the event a lawsuit is filed or another claim is made. If found to be enforceable, a limitation of liability clause can cap the amount of potential damages to which a company is exposed. Priceline states, To the extent permitted by law, in no event shall Priceline.com, including its respective officers, directors, employees, representatives, parents, subsidiaries, affiliates, distributors, suppliers, licensors, agents, or others involved in creating, sponsoring, promoting, or otherwise making available the site and its contents collectively the covered parties be liable to any person or entity whatsoever for any direct, indirect, incidental, special, exemplary, compensatory, consequential, or punitive damages or any damages whatsoever. The section goes into greater detail of what Priceline will not be responsible for and concludes to be a very well written liability clause. Section D, indemnification and chargebacks. In this section, 
Priceline uses what's called an indemnification clause to force its consumers or users to promise to cover Priceline's losses in the event that they are sued by a third party due to the actions of the consumer or user. According to Carter Mackley's article, What's Indemnification on StartupLaw.com, the indemnified party would ultimately be able to recover from the loss under legal theory, such as breach of contract or tort. So, the primary effect of indemnification in most cases is to shift the cost of defending third-party claims to the indemnifying party. So in layman terms, indemnification clause, clauses make customers fully responsible for their actions that may cause loss to the company they were initially doing business with. There is also a portion of this topic, chargebacks, which is located in Section A where I feel as if it should be relocated from Section A to Section D. This piece is fairly minor compared to what will be covered in Section A, so I will not go into great detail about it. Within Section E is the trademark and copyright notice that simply states that everything within Priceline.com from graphics and logos to call to action phrases is all owned by Priceline or third parties and cannot be reused in any fashion which leads us right into the next section, Section F, Claims of Copyright Infringement. In this section, Priceline shows compliance with the Digital Millennium Act by giving instructions to users as to how to contact Priceline if they feel that Priceline or any of its third parties within the site has infringed on any user's copyrighted material. Okay. So now I can go back and cover Section A of Priceline's Terms of Use. This covers disputes, arbitration, and chargebacks. In the event that customers have discrepancies with Priceline, Priceline requires that you agree to give them an opportunity to resolve any problem, dispute, or claim relating in any way to the Priceline websites and or any of its related applications or services. Unless prohibited by applicable law, any claim must be brought within two years from the date on which such claim arose or accrued. If Priceline is unable to resolve your claims within 60 days, you may seek relief through arbitration or a small claims court. Here's where we have to pause, because most people like myself aren't fairly knowledgeable about arbitration and why Priceline just ruled out regular court processes. According to an article by Robert Flynn titled The Top 10 Pros and Cons of Arbitration, mandatory arbitration is preferred over court trials due to cost, time, the decision maker, evidence, discovery, privacy, joining third parties, appeal rights, enforcement of awards, and legal errors. Almost all of these 10 reasons are in the beneficial favor of both Priceline and the consumers. To give more detail from Flynn's article which explains why mandatory arbitration is not too bad, I provided the link to the article for you down below. This way you will be able to review his pros and cons of mandatory arbitration. In an article from Time Magazine, Megan Leonhardt says, the problem with arbitration is that the arbitrators often come down on the side of the company and have cozy relationships with the industry. That's important because when arbitrators decided, consumers won only 20% of the time and recovered less than a third of the amount asked on average. I suggest that you should proceed with caution as you bring your claim against a corporation such as Priceline.com. Now, to answer the questions presented earlier, is it a valid contract? Well, yes. As of right now, it is a legally binding contract, but if you find yourself in a scrupulous situation after dealing with a company that has a terms of use agreement that is not in plain sight, that you have a chance to win a court case. 
These forms of agreement between consumer and business are called browse wrap agreements. According to Ed Bailey's 2009 article within the Electronic Frontier Foundation's website, the use of browse wrap agreements is unfair to users who generally are surprised by these contracts that were never brought to their attention. Accordingly, courts increasingly judge it to be unfair to hold website users accountable for terms and conditions of which a reasonable internet user would not be aware of just by using the site. 2. Are visitors bound to it or should they have to click I agree? When consumers are presented with the contracts or agreements up front and are additionally presented with the option to agree and accept whether they will continue to the site or disagree and leave, it is called a click wrap agreement. I believe that all of the businesses who require consumers to possess detailed knowledge of what's in these agreements should be forced to use click wrap agreements. At the moment, all visitors to a site who click I agree to having read or understood the terms and agreements presented before them should be bound by the agreement. I think that it would be in the best interest to provide the information up front and if consumers don't read it fully but click anyway then they have agreed to the terms and thus lose any rights removed from them in the agreement. If you have a dispute with Priceline can you sue them? Why or why not? Unfortunately you cannot sue Priceline unless Priceline itself relieves you of its mandatory arbitration clause which will be highly unlikely. What changes would you recommend? As mentioned earlier, the chargeback subsection of Section A should be moved to Section D. Other than that, I think that Priceline has a pretty buttoned up terms of use agreement and users should definitely proceed with caution when using their site. Thank you. Bye.